you taught yourself this language, it's not going to take you four weeks to learn how to tell time and say, hi, how are you? My name is Kristen. You know? I don't even think I'm going to be that loud. Like, I'm not yelling at the thing. It's 2020, you know? It's not 2017. You don't have to be like this anymore. Hey, it's Kristen Janae. So I recently completed three semesters of college Spanish and I wanted to have an honest conversation about whether or not you can make any real progress in the classroom setting. As to not have a 30 minute video, wow. I decided to make this a three part mini series. In part one, it'll kind of go over my background in Spanish and what I actually learned in said courses. Part two will be did intermediate Spanish get me to an intermediate level and how I tested my level? And part three would be, was it worth it? And do I recommend learning this way? Let's get started. The biggest pro, in my opinion, for taking courses in a college setting and learning a language is consistency. Someone makes you do the work. If you have tried to teach yourself a language before, you know how easy it is to fall in and out of just doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing, studying how you wanna be studying. There's assignments in college, so you will get some, some knowledge. Whether or not that knowledge will be applicable, like you'll actually be able to use it, is another story. But it's a lot of input, and it's a lot of grammar, and you're bound to learn something. The biggest con, it is slow. In the three semesters, so about a year, you know, each semester if you go for a full is four months, um, only covers four chapters of our textbook. So 12 chapters in a year, over a year if you take the summers off, is slow progress. It's not going to take you 12 months to learn as much as I did. This slowness and this pacing is really seen the heaviest in the first semester in, in, in elementary Spanish one. You spend four weeks on super basic pleasantries, you know, nice to meet you, hi, hello, where are you? You know, telling time and not like nuanced time, like it's four, it's 4.30. Again, if you taught yourself this language, it's not gonna take you four weeks to learn how to tell time and say, hi, how are you? My name is Kristen, you know? So my background in Spanish, in case you care, um, I guess I did not go in at zero, but I didn't go in at very much. So in middle school, I took about three years of Spanish, but that was 15 years ago. So I don't know how much that accounts for. Um, more recently, I did the first level of Pimsleur, so the first 30 lessons. That was about five to seven years ago. I also own Rosetta Stone, but I don't think I made it much past level one, if I even made it to level two. All in all, when I count up like how much Spanish I probably went into this class with, I would say that basic pleasantries Hola, como estas? That kind of thing, mucho gusto, and basic verb conjugations. Not all verb conjugations, just present tense. Because I was not, not actively learning Spanish. If you look in the recesses of my channel, prior to this, I had been self teaching Japanese, and that was my main focus. And then after that, in the time where I wasn't doing that, I wasn't really doing much of anything except for dabbling back and forth at the basics of Japanese. Hola, me llamo Kristen. Uh, entiendo un poco de español, pero no mucho. La niña bebe agua en el baño. Mucho gusto. <laughs> Going across the screen now are the specific topics we covered every week if you wanted to simulate the learning schedule of a college course. But here's a rundown of how each chapter was broken down. We'll use chapter six as an example. In this class, 
each chapter, like I said, we only covered 12 chapters in the three semesters. So each chapter lasted one month. So in theory, if you're this kind of student, the first thing you would do in the chapter is read the chapter in the textbook. I gotta be honest, I never did that. They give you so much like busy work in the topic that reading the textbook seemed like a waste of time. Also, because they would rip so much of the textbook and integrate it into the assignments, it really wasn't necessary. But if you're that kind of person, then the first thing you would do is read the chapter. Okay, now here's the first thing I actually did. So in Contextos, it's basically the vocab that you learn in the section. You will see like an interactive kind of picture and it would be the vocab you would learn in a scene. So you would do that. <laughs> then they would have you do vocab where you would listen and repeat, match the vocab, and then see a picture of what your vocabulary was supposed to be. And you would say it. So like if a picture of pants came up, you would say pantalones. Pantalones. Obviously. That would be the first thing you did. The next section would be grammar. They wouldn't necessarily last a week, but you would get a grammar topic probably three to four every chapter. They would give you a little page to read about the grammar topics. Then this animated man would come here and tell you, explain basically exactly what you read on the page before about the grammar topics, and then you do a bunch of activities. So following that, there would be like a country highlight in chapter six, it's Cuba. So they'll tell you about some famous people in Cuba, where it's located on the map, some things about the population and all that. And then again, you'd answer questions about it. It's school, so there's a lot of assignments. And you would watch a, following that, you would watch a photo novella. Um, that's what they called them. It's like little skit, not skits. It's kind of like, oddly like a vlog kind of that follows a girl that's moved to mexico i think and she as a foreign exchange student and she's going around having conversations and experiencing the culture there using vocabulary and grammar topics that you've learned in this chapter visité a unos familiares allá el año pasado viven en california oiga don guillermo las chicas creen saber cómo regatear híjole de veras eso creen so you get one of those every month. And then the only other thing we would do per chapter is testing. So you'd have a quiz on the contextos section. So a vocabulary quiz, you'd have a big test and you'd have a voice quiz or a voice board. But even when I took, I took some of these online and some of these in person, but regardless, you never did a in-person voice test, a speaking test. I remember when I was in middle school, not everything, but like once or twice a year, you would have to go sit with the teacher. She would ask you something in Spanish and you would answer in English. It's not that. You just record, there's some prompts on the screen and you record your answers to the prompts and then submit them. Like you could type them out and then just read them and record them which I mean, it's good for getting the question right. I don't know if it really helps you with your speaking, maybe with your pronunciation, but no one's really even there to correct it. But hey, who am I, right? Overall, if I had to highlight what I thought my biggest takeaway from these courses were, it would be that I was forced to study grammar. When you're teaching yourself a language, buckling down and learning and practicing grammar can be one of the hardest parts because it's generally not the most fun. Contexto, three to four grammar points, animated video, practice activities, Spanish speaking country, oral, oral quiz. <laughs> an oral quiz, an oral or speaking quiz. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word, but <laughs> an oral or speaking quiz, duh. But they did use the term voice board. That's why it's in my head. But I'm like, what am I trying to say? 